Hi, my name is Chris. What we're looking at here is a text-based Star Trek game I made. It was created for my YouTube show, Making Games by Year. The purpose of that show is that we go year by year, starting at the beginning of the game industry chronologically, and the audience votes on a game, and we build our own version of that game from the ground up. Last time on the show, for those of you who are new, we built the text-based Lunar Lander game from the ground up as our kind of prehistory pilot episode. And then the comment section voted on this Star Trek game for the next game. The other options were like the earliest version of Oregon Trail and Computer Space, which was the first commercial arcade video game. So the result of this one it was a little surprising, but um, it actually makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of people grew up playing this game in DOS. I played it with my I played it with my dad and brother growing up, and um, it was old even then in the early 90s. The purpose of this video is basically to let you all know that the episode itself is coming, but in the meantime, this game is ready, and you can check it out and give feedback, and also just this video acts as kind of like a tutorial of here's what the game's all about and all of that. Alright, let's get started. So this game is on my GitHub page. Uh, URL will be in the description. So um, on the splash page here, um, you know, you can start a new game. There's also, even though it's a little anachronistic, there's a autosave that uses the local storage feature in the browser. So you can pick up your progress if you tab away from it or whatever. Um, also note this uh, link down here takes you to the GitHub page. I think this game is a good platform for expansion. So if uh, so, if anyone wants to, you know, fork the game and add features to it, uh, that would be super cool. And also here's a link to the Spotify if you want some tunes from the year the game was originally created. And anyways, let's get started with a new game. So you can play it in two different modes. There's a mouse and touchscreen friendly mode, which is not true to the original source game, um, which was typing based. Um, but the touchscreen and mouse friendly mode is the, really the preferred way to play. Um, I started with the faithful typing version, and then I just kind of the original game was all menu based for the most part so I just kind of retrofitted it with hyperlinks and stuff and um, so like I didn't change the game design in order to make it you know I just kind of operated under like source port rules where you know when you have a doom source port you can add mouse look and stuff just to make it a little more playable um, so we'll do that the other, the other option you have here is whether you play in the Mirror Universe or the Prime Universe. Um, it's kind of a tradition whenever someone ports this game to add their own spin on it, their own features. And um, I thought, you know, it would be fun to make it so you could play in the Mirror Universe. And really there's only a couple changes when you play in the Mirror Universe versus the Prime Universe, like in the classic game. There's, of course, all the text and the backstory changes, just that cosmetic change there. There's also a mechanic where you can bombard civilian targets on planets in the Mirror Universe to draw enemy ships into the sector, which, if you can survive that big fight, makes the game a little easier in terms of time pressure. And um, there's also a minor thing where if you blow up a friendly starbase, your crewmates throw you in the agonizer booth and you lose stargate. The agony booth is the most effective means of discipline. So when we start a new game, we've got the map of our current sector. We've got some important status information in the sidebar here, like the number of turns we have remaining, uh, our ship's current location in the galaxy, um, torpedoes, shields, energy, the number of enemies remaining, and so on. The basic premise of the game is that there's some number of enemy ships somewhere in the galaxy and we, in order to win we just have to track them all down and destroy them. We have a certain number of star dates to do it. Uh, so that's a really basic video game premise. 
Um, but this game actually has, especially for the time, a, uh, a lot of supporting mechanics that make that pretty interesting. And we're going to get into all of that uh, here in this video. Um, we start in a sector that has no enemies in it. As you can see, sector clear. And visually, we just see ourselves and a bunch of stars. So we need to jump to another sector that's got an enemy in it. Um, so this is a map of the galaxy that's got all the sectors. We've got, you know, eight by six sectors, uh, 48 total. And the question marks are sectors that are unexplored and we don't know what's in them. And the other sectors with nothing or, um, or any of these other symbols, uh, we know what's in them. Your ship can do a long-range scan to fill in all the sectors adjacent to your current location. Fill in these question marks. So we're here. Um, we have three question marks in the sector above us. So what we're going to do, actually, before we choose another location, we're going to go to the sensors menu and do a long-range scan. So now our ship's computer has a complete map of all the sectors surrounding our current location. So if we go back to that navigation map and go to our current location, these are all filled in now. There's nothing in them, so that was a bit pointless, but at least we know. Uh, so there's a star base in the sector below us, but we're all stocked up here at the beginning of the game, so we don't really need that. In the sector next to us, there is an enemy vessel. Um, we can see when we click on it, it tells us what's there. Uh, we can go... So there's two here. Four there. So maybe we could go there and have a really interesting fight. Uh, before we do that, though, we'll raise our shields to maximum. And then we will go have a big fight here. So, these are our enemy ships here. Some of them are obscured behind the star. So, first, so we've got two options for weapons. You have torpedoes. You start the game with ten of those, and once you use them up, you can only get more at a star base. When they hit, they're one hit kill, but they are blocked by obstacles like stars, and you have to pick a single target to aim at. You also have phasers, which are a little less intuitive, but also very useful. Uh, you have phasers that use the same main energy as your navigation and shields. Uh, and you can configure how much power you want to commit to a single round of phaser fire. The phasers... When you fire the phasers, it automatically targets all the enemies in the sector and divides up the energy, you tell it, amongst all the enemies. The phaser fire ignores obstacles like stars, which is pretty useful. But the really, the Achilles heel with phasers is they get much weaker with distance. And these are mechanics I just directly imported from the original game. So, um... We're here, um, so the enemy phasers work very similar to your phasers where the further away they are, the less damage they're going to do. Um, so that's a tactical decision on your part. If you want to fire from a distance with torpedoes, you can you know, use short range navigation to, to jump as far away from the enemy as you can before firing. To, to reduce the amount of damage you take. First thing we're going to do is weed out... We're going to weed out this guy here so there's fewer things shooting at us. Uh, so this guy, each sector is made up of subsectors and you can just find, you can just count this like graph paper. So X5, Y5. So we have an enemy at subsector 5, 5. So we'll shoot this guy, and our shields 
are now 1760 after taking hits from all these enemies. They're hitting us for not a whole lot of damage at a time, but there's three of them. So, don't really have a clear shot to any of these enemies. We can scan the enemy ships to see how much energy they have in their shields and get an estimate of how much damage it would take to destroy with phasers. So, this is an estimate per ship, and then we get a total down here, and that is too high a value there. Um, we can't actually take them out uh, with the energy we have. So, what we're going to want to do, we want to get to a spot where we have a clear shot with torpedoes, but we're as far away from them as possible. So we're going to do a short range jump, and we could go here, or we could go here. So we've taken some hits. Our shields are quite a bit lower now, and we get a notification here that our long-range sensors are damaged. They're at 78% integrity, so we can go to the ship's computer and look at our damage report really quick. Um, each turn we get a little bit, um, each turn we get some repair in, uh, so our long-range sensors are a little damaged. So if things get too bad, we can also go to a star base and every turn we're docked, a random component that's damaged will be, get fully repaired. And um, looks like everything's good. Um, but this is a mechanic of the game where when you get hit, you lose shields. If you don't have any shields, you get destroyed. But also there's a random chance that some of the damage will carry through the shields and damage one of the ship's components. So for example, if your short range sensors get damaged a bit, then your screen starts to scramble. So we're in a good spot here. Um, since we're a little closer, maybe let's take a look at how much energy it would take to destroy everyone with phasers. It's still pretty high, so maybe we'll take one guy out with a torpedo and then switch to phasers to finish off the other two. So we want to take out the guy at 7-4 because he's the furthest. And done. Our library computer's been hit. Uh, everything is still fine. Our ship's computer is still fine, we can still access the maps. Um, our damage report would tell us if there's any adverse effects we need to worry about. So we'll go back to the sensors. We've got 803 to 1204 energy to destroy both of these guys with phasers. So we're just going to our total free energy, 919, is in that range, and we destroy everybody. We have no free energy left right now, so if we try to jump somewhere else, we don't have enough energy. We need to free up some, so what we're going to do is lower our current shield level. So we've got some energy there. And we've got 24 star dates to find 10 enemies, so that's plenty of time. So what we will actually do is find a friendly star base and refuel. So we're going to do a short range jump to the square next to the star base. And we're going to dock. It's going to fully repair our library computer while we're docked. And our everything, all of our resources are refilled. We'll do a damage report 
We could stay and have the Starbase finish repairing our long-range sensors, but that's at 94%, so we're fine. So we're going to undock and jump to another sector. We've got one enemy, one enemy, two enemies. So from here we know what to do. We just pick a sector that has an enemy in it or enemies and we go there and fight and if we need to go to a star base in between fights to stock up or repair we'll do that and we just keep doing this until we've either destroyed all the enemies or we've exhausted all of the enemies that are in known sectors and we have to go exploring so let's just fast forward ahead to that part okay so now we're at the point where all of the information from the star bases at the start of the game is now exhausted and we don't know where our last three enemies are so we're going to have to go exploring some unknown sectors so what we want to do the long-range sensors will fill in all the question marks in the sectors surrounding your ship so you want to pick a spot where you're as you're adjacent to as many question marks as possible. So if we go here to 7-5, every single square surrounding that is a question mark. So if we do a long range scan there, then this whole bottom corner of the screen will be filled in. So we'll do a long range scan. So we've got three enemies left. We know exactly where they're at. So we're here. Take out this target. And then this one with torpedoes. And then that's the end of the game here. We've taken out all the enemies. And there's a score which is basically just an efficiency rating of, you know, the rate of how many enemies per turn you take out. Uh, it's really completely meaningless. It's not stored anywhere. Um, if you have a score above 1,000, then that's a pretty decent score if you care about that. Um, but the random number generation affects how easy any given game is quite a bit. So, so that's pretty much it. All right, that's the game. Uh, in terms of what happens next, um, the episode will come along, which will explain a lot more about how the game was made and what features it had and the history of the original game and what made it special. And um, uh, if you want more detail about the development of that, you know, now or after the episode, you can... Click the link on the splash page and check out the GitHub. You can see the entire commit history as I was making the game. And you can download and fork the source code. And um, if someone wants to pick this up, I think having collaborators on this game to add new mechanics to it and things like that would be super cool. I think it's a... I think this game works really well as a you know, gives me some nostalgia for a game I played in my childhood, and it's really cool to have a version of it that's a little more playable that I can play in short bursts on my phone on the go or on my laptop. And um, the code is set up in such a way that just adding new mechanics or tweaking things will be really easy. Uh, so you can do that. Also, based on player feedback, um, a lot of rebalancing can happen with this game too um, because um, I wanted to get this out there as soon as possible so I'm sure that I'm sure a lot of gameplay balance things can be tweaked a lot based on you know having a larger audience size to give me feedback on that and uh, um, in the meantime uh, I'll be working on the episode and uh, I hope you enjoy the game thanks for watching